We're going to go back in time. Actually, we're looking forward, not backward. But uh, memory makers, making memories. It's an important thing. How many could just, in your mind right now uh, in this room, think back to special points in your life? What makes them special? They were shared. Uh, they may be spiritual points where the presence of God did something unique and special in your life. They may be collective points uh, of family gatherings, opportunities. Sometimes they're not even all that spectacular. But, you know, memories can still be a powerful and wonderful gift uh, when we learn to make those and honor the Lord as we make those, he can do some wonderful things in our lives and the lives of our loved ones. So we're going to look at this idea of being memory makers. And this is not so much to reminisce, but it's to say, what opportunities are the Lord given me uh, and, and today, tomorrow, this week, uh, in the future? What opportunities is, a, is the Lord given me that I might uh, be able to honor him and bless others by being a person who makes memories, who helps others, who blesses others. Ecclesiastes speaks about there's a time and season for everything under the sun. This is not the season to sleep. You guys are quiet today. But we're going to look at a key verse here that's quite interesting when you really think about it. In Ephesians chapter 5, verse 15 and 16, it says this. Well, verse 15 says this. It says, see that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, rede redeeming the time for the days are evil. If I back it up and look at or keep reading, verse 16, making the most of every opportunity is what it says in the NSAB. Uh, and then in the NIV, it says, be very careful how you live not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity. Why? Because the days are evil. Seek to walk reflectively, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Now, it's an interesting use of words here because we, we see this here in this passage of Scripture in Ephesians, uh, but it shows up. Uh, uh, several times. In fact, there's four times the Greek word that is used here shows up in the New Testament. It gr shows up in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 16. It also shows up in a very similar way in Colossians chapter 4, verse 5. In Colossians 4, 5, we see a very similar use of this word. And then it's seen uh, two other times in Galatians chapter 3, verse 13, and Galatians chapter 4. Galatians chapter 4, verse uh, 5, we see it used as to Christ redeeming us from our sins. But in Ephesians and in Colossians, it says this in Colossians chapter 4, verse 5, it says, Walk in wisdom toward them that are without, redeeming the time. So this word here is actually two Greek words stuck together. And uh, we want to look at that a little bit because what does it mean to redeem? Redeem is a powerful word, isn't it? To redeem something. What does it mean? Well, we understand the context of this word used when Christ redeems us. He purchases us. He buys us out of the wages of sin, which is death. He pays the price. Isn't that what we use about the cross? It is Christ paying the pri price for our sins. And as we consider this, we look at this idea of what does this mean then here in Ephesians uh, 5, 15, and 16, where it says, redeeming the time for the days are evil. And what does it mean in Colossians when it speaks to the same thing, showing kindness for you need to redeem the time? Again, breaking this Greek word down, you basically have two concepts here. You have ek which means from out of, from out of. And then you have the second part of this Greek word, which means purchase. So this scripture literally says purchase from out of the time. Purchase from out of the time. So you and I are called to in this scripture to purchase from out of. And I want to propose to you today that actually to, to be memory makers, we have to understand what this verse is saying and we have to live by it. But the key concept here about redeeming is to purchase out of. That means 
a couple things. But before we go to those things, I want to look at a weird reference here that it's made. Because elsewhere in Scripture, it's made into redeeming us, people. But here we have a reference to redeeming time. To purchase time out of something. And really, I want to lay this out for you. To be a memory maker, a biblical memory maker, we must purchase the time out of everyday life. But let's look at the word time. Because the time here, uh, it, the word used for time in the Greek is keros. Keros is not something that is measured in minutes or seconds. It's not something you can look at your watch or look at the sundial or look at your computer or your cell phone and you can know. Keros is a reference to time that is not a measurement of a specific moment. It's, it's, a, it's a part of the experience. So it's not a hand on the dial. It's not a time. It's not like tonight. We're having a meeting, and really, you don't want to miss out on it. It is at 6 o'clock. You don't want to miss the event. But when we're speaking Kairos here, we're talking about the event, not the actual hand on the clock. Does that make sense? So if we're going to exchange a meal, um, how many are always late here? Because this is great news for you. You get, oh, I thought you meant Kairos. I thought you meant the, the, the Greek term of time. Because I don't have to look at my watch for that. You invited me to dinner and I show up for dinner, not for 6 o'clock, for dinner. It may be 6.15, it may be a quarter till, it may be 7 o'clock, but I showed up for dinner. It's more of the thing, the event, than it is the, the hands on the clock. And so when we begin to put these two words together, we got re really three Greek words together here. We have to purchase, to purchase from, what are we doing? To purchase from what? The actual clock. We are redeeming the time by taking the time out to enjoy or to make the memories God has called us to do. Why? Because the days are evil. We need to purchase out of, to bring out of. So it's time for lunch. How much time to lunch is a wrong statement here. But it's time for lunch is a proper statement. Because it's ne not measured by the temporal. It's eternal. And we'll see this play out here in a little bit in a psalm, but Kairos is, is more of the event than it is the moving of the hands on the clock. And you and I are called to that. But if we're going to redeem the time in these scriptures, we also got to understand why are we redeeming it? Because time is in bondage. Because you don't need to redeem something or purchase something out of unless it is... What? Locked up. Christ comes as our redeemer. If we look at the Old Testament, we see Boaz as the kinsman redeemer, a type, a, a figure of Christ redeeming us. And what does he do? He purchases Ruth out of by buying the field. He sets her free from, from that desolate lifestyle and, and liberates her. Through this process, so it is with Christ and you and I. He purchased us out of the temporal to stick us in the eternal. So when we look at this verse again and we just consider this, it says, seeing that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeem the time because the days are evil. Let me read this to you in the NIV again. It says, be very careful how you live. Not as unwise, but as wise. And what does it really mean? The modern translation catches this very well. I love the punctuation of redeeming the time. But the modern tra translation breaks that down into maybe a lingo we might understand better. It's making the most of every opportunity. To be a memory maker, you have to seize the moment, not the clock. You have to seize the moment. You see, the moment is given to you. But the moment is quickly passing as well. 
it will go away. To make the most of every opportunity or to redeem the time, we have to live spirit-led lives. We have to be aware of what God is doing in this moment. We have to be in touch with the Spirit of God and the people around us. Everything else is insignificant in this story. Because God is only concerned about the people around us. He's only concerned about redeeming us out of the bondage and sin of, of our own living and setting us free. And to redeem the time means to capture what God wants to do in the moment. How do you redeem your time? To be a memory maker, to be an eternal memory maker, you've got to understand it's not the clock. It's the moment God has given you. And it's a fleeting moment, not because it's measured by a clock. It's a fleeting moment because it's an opportunity that either we steward or we forfeit. We either walk this out in honoring God or we give it up. It's an opportunity, but Kairos is slipping away. You see, as you look back on life and consider your own life, how many in this room would say, there were moments I had an opportunity to enjoy something, but because of my attitude, I missed it? Right? How many have been there? Let's just see, a, let's do a confession this morning. You've been there. Oh, yeah. We're human. We mess up. The rest of you guys are liars, but, which makes you human too. But... We mess up we, we, because of our attitude, because of something that's going on, because we're preoccupied. Mind you, this whole idea of redeeming the time requires two things of us. Not to reminisce in the past and not to focus on what we don't have. It's to walk in the spirit of God in the moment in which we are given. And if you're focused on tomorrow... You might be missing what God is doing today. And if you're focused on yesterday, you're going to be also missing what God is doing today. Yesterday's gone and tomorrow may never be mine, but this moment God has given you. That's why when you come together with the believers, every gathering is important to God and it's an opportunity to make memories. But I'll tell you what you can't do. You can't make memories if you're not aware or cognitive of what God wants to do in that moment. This is why Scripture admonishes us to redeem the time for the days are evil. It's slipping away. We're given these opportunities, but the opportunities to do good, the opportunities to bring glory to God, they're already kind of on autopilot. And anyone who has lived any length of time can tell you you can't go back. When an opportunity is forfeited, it's forfeited. And this is why Scripture warns us to redeem the time, for the days are evil. You can't re-raise your children. Can't do it. It's not something that's measured on the clock. It's the moments. There's not a re-quoting of time. We don't actually even go to time when we refer to events of the past. I remember when. We don't say, that's what we say. We just are reminiscing about a period of back in, but we don't really remember the time. We don't say, oh, I remember at 6 o'clock on a Sunday night back in 1992, actually it was 6.05 p.m. Who quotes it that way? No. We remember, we remember the Kairos. The, the event, the, the orchestration of the Holy Spirit, the significant moment, and that's okay to remember it, but keep in mind, this moment is the moment in which we're given to make memories. Praise God for past memories and trust God for future. But man, we'll be throwing away good memories if we don't live aware cognizant in the present, led by the Holy Spirit to seize the time. This is why when you're out at a restaurant or you're at home with your family or you're laboring alongside of one of your co-workers, this is why the moment matters. What is God doing in the moment? 
What does he want you to do? How does he want you to redeem the moment? Because on autopilot, you'll lose it. It'll be swallowed up by the busyness of our life or the worldliness of our mindset. How many moments has the church of Jesus Christ lost because we have been preoccupied with the things of the world? Because here again, this whole notion of keros is, is more of this notion of event and not things. And yet, we are such a society that's driven by a clock. A clock that God knows nothing of. He doesn't measure things. He set it there for the mortal. But we are called out of that into his glorious presence. We are redeemed from this earth. And we are given to the positive of the Holy Spirit. And even to the point that even our bodies will one day be transfigured as Christ returns. He is redeeming us out of this mortal world. And he wants his people to live as memory makers. People who make memories by redeeming the time. It's an odd concept. Because everywhere else in scripture we're talking about redeeming people. But it's here he's talking about how are you using the moments that I'm giving you? You see, if we go with the flow of culture, we'll waste our lives. We'll waste the moments. We'll throw it away. But if we will be led of the Holy Spirit, guided by the Spirit of God, we can actually make the most of moments. If you go back to the good old days, we can reminisce. This is a little bit before my time, but uh, Route 66, uh, people talk about that. You see that, the iconic highway across the U.S. People will talk about, um, oh, man, I remember that used to be such a trip. It's such a wonderful trip. And it was. It was, I assume. I assume. Here's why I assume that. Because, let's see, cars didn't have air conditioning. You shoved your whole family in there, right? You drove down the road until you couldn't drive anymore, and you didn't have a lot of spare change, and there weren't a lot of restaurants. You stopped a little dive here and there, and it was a wonderful thing, right? You stayed in the hotel that some of them, motel, not hotel, with a flashing neon sign, some of them didn't have air conditioning either. You opened your windows. Oh, you had to go to the restroom. That was around the side of the gas station where they gave you a little lock and key with a big hanging thing on top of it so you would bring it back. That restroom probably wasn't clean from the day it was built. Memory makers. The good old days. Really? You stuff five people in your car today, your family's really larger, stuff five people in your car today, don't run the air conditioning, wind down the windows, have an AM stereo only, or radio, it wasn't stereo, um, and have an AM and go down the road and drive across country. You know what was good about it? It wasn't the circumstances. It was the caros. It was the moment. You see... It's not our circumstances that dictate what the outcome of this moment is. It's our heart. It's our position. And it's amazing when our heart and our position is redemptive in nature. When it's redemptive in nature, what happens is all of a sudden the lack of air conditioning, the lack of a decent hotel room to sleep in, the lack of a clean restroom and the lack of a nice restaurant doesn't matter anymore. Why? You're with each other. What did you used to do? Many people even camped. My wife and I tried that one time in our married life. And we decided it wasn't good for our keros. It wasn't good for our marriage because it wasn't redemptive at all. It was even at a church camp. Best thing about it was the flies and the, and the mud and it rained and, and we, we had borrowed, because I knew my wife was, she was a diehard, not a diehard camper. So we borrowed a friend's Winnebago, which I managed to swamp to the axles. That was a nice campground we stayed in. Good typical church campground. But you know what those services that we were in? They were powerful. 
You see, in the midst of all the evil, all the difficulties, all the challenges, all the circumstances of life, what matters most is the redeemed time. And that may be in the sharing of a family meal. It only may be a few moments. But here's what I'm calling us to do. If we're going to make memories, we got to know when those moments are by being led of the Holy Spirit. And we have to value those moments. We have to desire those moments. We have to be looking for those moments so that God may be glorified. Literally. Literally. To redeem is to be purchasing out of slavery, of bondage, the time that God has given us. And if he's commanded us in this scripture to do this, to redeem the time for the days are evil, it means it requires an effort on our part to redeem the time. How can we find an opportunity to to redeem the time in our lives? When you walk out of here, are you going to redeem the time? Well, you can only do it by being aware and reliant upon the Holy Spirit. You can only do it if you look past the, the, the cell phone time, look past the clock, and you say, okay, God, what are you doing in this moment? Those are the moments of life that are so rich, not just for friendships, but rich for God. Rich for God. If you think of your own spiritual journey, it's those moments with God. You don't say, wow, I was praying at the altar one day, and it was, it was, um, it was uh, 11.55. Man, I really felt the presence of God. No. You just remember what? The redeemed moment with God. The, the event that God was doing. We see this unfold in Scripture in Psalms uh, chapter uh, 90 because Moses speaks of this. It's a psalm written by Moses, and it gives us a little bit of a picture of life. It's a psalm about time. It's a psalm about life. It's It's a psalm about the challenges of this life, but it's also a psalm that reflects the goodness of God and how he's with us and how God is doing so much in the midst of us. It is also, I must say this, because in the middle of the psalm, it's a psalm that really is very pointed about how righteous God is and how unrighteous we are. How easy it is for us not to live redemptively with our lives. But it's not one out of desperation. It's one out of just a Moses comes to a place of contentment. Let me frame this psalm too. Moses lived the uh, 40 years uh, of his life. Uh, as a prince in Egypt. Then he fled, okay, after striking down the guard and spent 40 years living with his father-in-law in in kind of the wilderness out there. And then he comes back, and now he's lived 40 more years after God has brung uh, Israel up out of Egypt. So he's, he's got, you, you add your 40s together here. He, Moses is getting old. This, at this point in the writing of this psalm, he's probably about 118. So he's basically lived that next 40 years. He's getting old. He's about ready to die. And he writes this psalm. And here's what he says. Lord, you have been our dwelling place through all generations. Notice this. God, who is redemptive, is the dwelling place. And through what? all generations, through all time. Before the mountains were born and before you brought forth the whole world from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. See, God transcends the clock. He doesn't measure the time. He doesn't care about the time. It doesn't matter to him because he's timeless and his works are timeless as well. You turn people back to dust, saying, return to dust, you mortals. A thousand years in your sight is like a day that has just gone by or like a watch in the night. Yet you sweep people away in the sleep of death. They are like new grass in the morning, and in the morning it springs up new, and by evening it is dry and withered. Doesn't it seem like when you're measuring the clock, it goes by that fast? But remember, the clock moves like that 
But the valuable things Moses is going to come to at the end of this psalm. Life is brief. It is, as Scripture says, but a vapor as we try to measure it. It goes by so quickly. But here's what we get to keep. We get to keep the redeemed. We always get to keep the redeemed. We don't get to keep the minute, the second, the hour. But we get to keep the redeemed. Every moment you and I live to redeem the time is a moment that is kept. It is a capsule that is protected by an eternal God. While the temple passes away, the eternal stays steadfast. Verse 7, you are consumed by your anger. We are consumed by your anger and terrified by your indignation. Here's the part where we begin to see Moses saying, how wicked we are as a people, but how righteous God is. You have set our iniquities before you, our secret sins in the light of your presence. All the days pass away under your wrath, and we finish our years with a moan. Our days may come to 70 years or 80 if our strength endures, and yet the best of them are but trouble and sorrow, for they quickly pass and we fly away. If only we knew the power of your anger. Your wrath is as great as the fear that we that is your due. Now note verse 12. Teach us to number our days, that we may gain a heart of wisdom. Relent, Lord. How long will it be? Have compassion on your servants. Satisfy us in the morning with your unfailing love that we may sing for joy and be glad all of our days. Make us glad, make us glad for as many days as, as you afflict us for as many years as we have seen trouble. Make us glad for as many days as you afflict us for as many years as we have seen trouble. Now, you would almost think, if, you, if you're not careful when you read that, that Moses is saying, man, God, you are sickening it to us. No, what he's revealing from the previous verses, in our sin, in the fall of mankind, we live under the curse. And that's what he's noting here. We live under the fallen state. And so Moses is saying here, as, as we live in this fallen temporal world, make your grace abound to us. Satisfy us. Because only God can bring that satisfaction. Only God can redeem the time in our life. He said, make us glad for as many days as you have afflicted us. Now, how many of you have ever had a day where nothing went wrong? Nothing. It doesn't happen too often, does it? Moses says, make us glad for all the days that you afflict us. You know, every day in this life has its afflictions. It has its struggles, both technical and spiritual. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, right? We know that there are spiritual battles going on. Every day carries its weight and burden. How do I know that? Because if you read in Genesis, part of the curse is by the sweat of your brow. Anyone else have to do it? Oh, we fight against that by calling it air conditioning. Then the air conditioning breaks, right? But then you've got to pay for that air conditioning, so you've got to work longer. By the sweat of your brow. We'll never escape by the sweat of your brow. This side of eternity. But even as we are walking through the, the pressure of a fallen world, we have the opportunity to redeem powerful moments as we yield ourselves to God. As we become aware of what he is doing and what he wants to do through our lives, we can make memories. We're approaching summer. It's an opportunity to make memories. Vacation is not about vacation. It's about making memories. It's about enjoying the company of one another. It's about enjoying that, not absent of God, but present of God. It's about that opportunity, making us glad for as many days as you afflict us, for as many years as you have seen, we have seen trouble. 
may your deeds be shown to your servants and your splendor to their children. You see, while life is hard on this earth, life is good in Jesus Christ. Because God is good all the time. His goodness never ends. How do we redeem the time? We give it to God. What does that look like? Every moment is unique and special, but it's surrendered. It's living with the awareness of God. Verse 17, may the favor of the Lord our God rest on us, establishing the work of our hands for us. Yes, establishing the work of our hands. Those who try to build a house labor in vain unless the Lord, right, builds that house. We can toil, we can work, and guess what? We're going to toil and work. The question is, how much of our time is going to be redemptive and how much is going to be temporal? What is redemptive is always done cognitive of what the Holy Spirit wants to do in that moment. It's always done ignoring the fastly fleeting clock of life. It's always done to live in the moment in which God is at. We're mortal. We have our limitations. Moses makes this very clear. We have incredible limitations. But here's one thing every single one of us in this room has. We have access to Jesus. And we have access to Jesus in this moment. You say, well, I blew it. Uh, I blew it when I was younger. I shouldn't have done that. It's gone. What matters is this moment. What matters is the moment in which you live, how you steward that by surrendering it to God. How you redeem that moment of time in which God has given you. When you go off to work in the morning, it, what matters is the moment he has given you. Not, not what happened today, although that's maybe wonderful, but what happens in the moment he has given you. He is with you. He says, I never leave you. I never forsake you. You have access to Jesus. And we have the moment in which he's given us to redeem that time. But we have to live aware of that. Colossians tells us this. Colossians chapter 3, verse 23, it says, Work willingly at whatever you do as though you're working for the Lord rather than people. Right? Work willingly at whatever you do as you're working for the Lord rather than people. Let's do a little bit of a confession here this morning. We're not filming the audience, so you, your, your boss won't know. How many go to work and have some things? And, and if you're a staff member here, you can't raise your hand. Uh, it may be true, but you have some things. That, well, you can. Um, how many go to work and have some things that you're like, ah, oh, I'm not looking forward to this. I got good news and bad for it, news for you. Let me give you the bad news first. Bad news is that might not go away. You know what the good news is? Jesus can do some powerful things with the burdens we bear when we just give the time to him. You may think you're working for GE or Humana or Ford or UPS you may think you're working for a retailer somewhere across the city or a fabrication plant. You may think that, but you're not. When you're redeemed, you're working as unto the Lord. Oh, and that product that's put out, it may be used by somebody and may be helpful in some ways to society, but I tell you what, after you put so many cars together, you don't really care about that fender anymore. Right? Anyone who works on the assembly line, it gets a little monotonous. You don't really care. After you ship so many packages, it gets old after a while. It's, it's fascinating for somebody to go in there, wow, all this is going on. Wow, fascinating. But that wears off. But you're not there just to provide for your family. That's part of the Lord uses that. You're there to redeem the time. God has you there to make memories in people's lives. To carry his presence, his glory into a situation that may be otherwise absent of that. You say, well, I work with some fellow Christians. Wonderful. Where one puts a thousand to flight, two puts 
10,000 to flood. All right, you got some partnership. God's getting ready to do some powerful things there. If you'll redeem the time. You're not just there running the clock to get to the end of the week so you get a paycheck. You're there because God has something more in store for the people around you. But if we only watch the clock, we'll miss the opportunity. And guess what? Your weekend or whenever you're off, I know so many work on so many odd shifts. Whenever you're off, you're not off so that you can rest. You're not. You're off so that you may redeem that time for his glory. Maybe it's with your family. Maybe it's with some friends. Maybe it's with a fellow Christian or, or an unbelieving neighbor or something that you can share Christ with. But you and I are called, according to this passage of Scripture, to redeem the time. For why? The days are evil. And we can do that, not by our strength, but re by relying upon the Holy Spirit's help. Let me give you quickly, as I conclude, some tips on redeeming the time. First of all, you need to be prayed up. You need to stay in a heart of prayer. It says in Scripture, pray without ceasing. A lot of you commute to your workplace. You know when on that commute, you can turn off the radio and turn on Jesus? I'm not saying the radio is bad, but sometimes it can be a distraction. I call it windshield prayers. If you're doing a lot of driving, windshield time. If you have a job that you're kind of doing a monotonous thing over and over again, you know what God has just given you? Opportunity to pray. Not to complain, but to pray. Seize those opportunities to pray. Pray without ceasing. Number two, notice others. Jesus noticed. Jesus was excellent at redeeming the time. He didn't miss opportunities. He didn't let them fly by. He responded. So we must be people of prayer, and we must also observe or notice others. For some in this room, let me put it bluntly, you need to notice your family. For others in this room, let me put it bluntly, you need to notice that there are more people on this earth than just your family. See, I got you both ways. Because it's not all about you. It's not all about just saving your family. And in fact, we can't save anything. He's the Redeemer. We just need to give it to Him. Number three, praise God. As I mentioned, nothing is worse for throwing away time than a sour attitude. And nothing is better for your attitude than praising God. When you begin to think of the wonders and the splendor of who he is, the greatness of the works he has done, the majesty of his name, that he spoke the world into existence, that he causes all things to be out of nothing he has made them. When all the laws of the universe are submitted to his command, when you begin to see that, when you begin to praise God for that, your attitude changes. Number four, be invested. Forget about yesterday and don't worry about tomorrow. Be invested in today, this moment, this moment of Kairos, because it's the moment God has. We see that in the account of the parable where the man was, uh, had a hard, large harvest, so he went to build what? More and bigger barns. And, and it was said, this very night of you, your life will be required. Sometimes we're planning for the big thing tomorrow when God just wants us to enjoy his presence and do what he wants us to do today because tomorrow is not ours. It's his. And I'm in him, so I can be okay with tomorrow. But if we fix our eyes on it, we'll miss. Be invested in the moment. Next, lean on the spirit and the word of God. You can't lean on it unless you're in prayer and in the word. Lean upon it. Because God will give you the words to say. It's not something we rehearse. But when the moment becomes powerful, we redeem it by being spirit-led. By not leaning to our own understanding, but trusting the Lord in all things. And finally, as you walk through a given moment of a day or walk through a day, pause and reflect. Reflect. Reflection is very good because it shows us where we have been, it's reflected by still leaning upon the Holy Spirit in prayer, 
in the Word, it shows us where we have redeemed the time and maybe where we have been bad stewards of the time so that we can come back the next day with the help of the Holy Spirit and we can do better at redeeming the time. Live with no regrets. Live, live giving each day to the Lord. And when it's done, let it be surrendered. And maybe in this time of reflection, it might require some repentance. Moses talks about that. Man, I messed up. It's funny. When Moses writes this psalm, he's within a few years of his life ending. And he's thinking back over his life and thinking, man, he had three sets of 40. And he's already aware he's not going into the promised land. It's not going to be his. But yet God has a promise for him. And he still had an impact. And that's what happens when we give the time over to Jesus Christ. We still have impacts. There's some things in our life we might not fully understand, but if we trust God and redeem the time, we can make memories. So when we walk out of here today and when we walk through this week and when we walk through this month, to next week's Mother's Day. You know what's important in Mother's Day? Your mother. That's important. You know what's really important in Mother's Day? No matter where you're at and what position you're at in life, you know what's really important? It's how you live the moment. How you live in Christ. And you know the best memories you're going to have? Sometimes people will walk away and think, well, I'm not a mother, so it doesn't relate to me because I'm a guy. It doesn't relate. Others will walk away and say, well, I, I want to have children you can't. And it can be a very hard time. And I, man, I, I can appreciate that there are challenges or maybe someone's lost their mother. But the best thing we can do is to be praising Him. Making the most of the moment. Because God wants to have you redeem the moment He gives you. Literally. I don't want this to happen to anybody, but I know it's happened to Pastor Mark and Naomi. She's not here today because there was a car accident this week. They were rear-ended on the interstate by a large moving van. Literally, a moment like that can be a, an opportunity. Can it not be? An opportunity for God to work through your life. But how are you going to do that? Only by yielding to Him. Let's stand to our feet. Redeeming the time for the days are evil. Let's pray together. With your heads bowed, I want to just ask, are there individuals in the room today who would just say, pray for me, Pastor, because I, I'm, I'm kind of either stuck on something that happened in the past or I'm too concerned with things in the future, and I may be missing out on what God wants to do through my life today. I may be not noticing the people around me. I may not be hearing the Spirit's voice for today. Because I'm focused either on something I regret or something in the past or I'm focused on something that is to come that I can't even make happen. But it's distracting me from living in this moment and redeeming this moment for Jesus Christ. If you're here today and that's you, slip your hand up. Um, thank you. Yes, yes, yes. Father, in the name of Jesus, we're mortals. We're mere human beings, as Moses said. But, Lord, you have given us this time, and you have given us your presence. It's not by our might or our power, but it is by your Spirit that you have made us more than conquerors in Christ Jesus. We are more than overcomers. And so, Lord, I pray for those who have raised their hand, and I pray for each of us in this room. Lord, this is a season to be remembering and reflecting and considering, Lord, how we can make memories together moments that are special and powerful, moments that are touched by your Spirit, that have your voice speaking into them, that are transformative moments in our life and the life of those around us. We can only do that, Lord, as we live with you, cognizant of you and others in the moment you have given us. Letting go of the past and not trying to grab hold of what we don't have yet, the future, but living today in Christ. For those who have raised their hands and for all of us, I pray you will help us. And you will. You are the Redeemer. 
and you can help us be redemptive in every moment. We ask your blessing in Jesus' name. And the body says, amen. God bless you.